Hey guys, number three video coming up of our series looking at a database data system to manage 1RM loads and then use those loads when you are programming. This is video C, as you can see, I've highlighted up the top there. We're primarily going to look at an example around how to generate um, a max of a data set. We need to use a specific formula called max if that we had a quick look at in uh, the second video, but I didn't explain, so I'm going to do that first. And the real goal of this process is to create a table of max scores, such as this. This is from my finished file. So we want to create a formula that can look through the data set and pull out the max score, regardless of whether it was in row 1 or row 1000. Over a multi-year period, we just want to be able to keep that max updated. And the purpose of that is to link it to something like this file, which you may have seen, video number 49, where we built a strength program template. And when you put, uh, select an exercise such as a front squat, it looks up the 1RM in a table like this. So if we've got a file that has uh, got a matching format, we can simply paste a table of data into this file every couple of weeks and know that the program 1RMs are going to update. So let's go ahead and have a look at our file for today. Here we are here, we want to be able to complete this table. And to do so we need to do a max if I did a max if previously, I'm going to explain that in detail first using this example data set. Convert it to a table, that way we're consistent with the uh, structure of the formulas that we're using. And I'm going to call this TBL example. Just like all my tables, we've got clear column headings all the way across name, venue, and score. And so if I'm over here, and I'm trying to generate the max if for Joe when he plays matches at home, then this is how I can do it. My first criteria Is it the name equals Joe? Now if I lock the row number but not the column number then I should be able to drag that across to Tom. Now if it meets that criteria I want to also add the second criteria. We want the venue if it equals home. And so this time when I hit F4, what I want to lock is not the row number, but the column number. And now if I am lucky enough that I find some rows of data in the database that meet both those criteria, what I simply need to do is reference the cells that the formula can look through to find the max. So I just have to use my column referencing again and choose score which is our third column. I don't want a false, I don't want anything if it's false, I just want it to stay uh, zero or blank. So I'm going to close bracket our tooltips are telling us that we've still got more brackets to close. And so if I go Control shift enter now, it's going to give me a score of 90. So let's just check that. Joe, 87. Joe, 82. And Joe, 90. So it's picked up the correct score. If I drag that across, let's see if it picks it up for Tom. Tom at home, his scores are 68 and 75. 
so that's correct as well. If I drag it down, it's going to update the away scores as well. So it looks like we've got them right, but how does that work? If I just choose Joe as our example, and I select everything inside the first and last bracket. So this works great on a PC. All I've got is one open and one closed bracket, which I haven't selected. If I hit F9, what we will see is the resulting uh, numbers that come out of those two max if questions or criteria. So it's only looking at 87, 82, and 90. So it skips over everything that's false, because it's if it's false, it hasn't met um, our two criteria. And so the max only has to look at 87, 82, and 90, and pick the one which is biggest. So I'm going to go Control Shift Enter, and re-enter that formula. So you can see it's an array formula, it's got the curly brackets around the outside, you have to use Control Shift Enter to put it in, but this particular concept works great, you could also do min if you wanted to, so that min if, that would be useful if you were looking at a large data set and it was relating to something with a uh, lower score being better, such as speed times. So max if and min if are uh, great little formulas. You can't use a built-in one like you do average if, sum ifs, or count ifs. Excel put them in, I think, in version 2007 and onwards, but max if hasn't yet happened. So option one for calculating a max with criteria is a max if array formula. Now hardcore Excel developers will avoid array calculations like the plague because at times they can be um, quite detrimental to the performance of your file. It can slow things down quite a lot. So array calculations are seen as not not particularly a good option in many cases, particularly if you need lots of them. Um, I think that if you don't need too many, they're okay. Um, they're also very useful at times, so I use them quite a bit, but I try not to use them in large amounts. So uh, an alternative function that has been put into recent versions of Excel is called aggregate. Aggregate doesn't require control shift enter, it's not an array, and therefore it can accomplish the same thing without uh, potentially jeopardizing the speed of your file. And so I'm going to type equals aggregate. And as we see, there's a whole bunch of options there. 19 different options that you can choose from. Um, I'll mention this now. Mike Gervin, easily the guy whose videos I watch more than anyone else's. He is a formula guru and that's the kind of stuff that I like the best. And if you're looking for uh, a particular one on this topic, search Excel Magic Trick 935 to see that. There's a little hyperlink there. He has more than 2,000 videos and uh, is a fairly excitable guy. He loves his Excel and does some really amazing stuff with formula. So um, if you want to learn more about aggregate, then um, he is the man to teach you. Anyway, we need to choose large. And the reason we want to choose large and use large is because if we want the, the single largest number, that's the same as the max. So that's how we can take advantage of aggregate by saying we want the single largest number. As soon as you put a comma, it gives you another option. And uh, the thing that we want to choose is particularly important, which is ignoring error values. And now we can actually get into writing our formula. Now, if you ever used a formula called sum product, it's not so common anymore. It used the syntax very much like this now. So what I want to do is set things up um, so that we can put our two criteria in place. Just going to open up a couple of brackets. All 
Alright, so that's our first criteria. And we'll close that off with a bracket. And if I select just that part of it and hit F9, we get trues and falses. And that's good. We need to multiply that by our next criteria. Which is our venue. I just edit that so that we can drag things across. And if I select all of that, that too gives me trues and falses. And if I close off the second bracket and select the whole lot, it gives me ones and zeros. Now, in Boolean logic, a one is true and a zero is false. So one times one equals one, but one times zero equals zero. So basically what it's saying is the first third and fifth item in this list meet both our criteria. Everything else does not. And so that's how um, that kind of logic setup works. Some product works exactly the same way. And so what we want to be able to do is use that to isolate down the score that we're looking for. We do that by dividing, close it off, we want the one largest score, so that gives us the max, and now if we select this whole bit here, we get 87, 82 and 90 which are our three matching items and everything else is an error, a div zero error. It's because we're dividing something by a zero. And because we chose option number six, which was ignore error values, this function will work. And it will give us exactly the same results as we had up above. So I'm just um, realigning the formula on some of these things. Um, when you drag table references across they, they do edit themselves a little bit so to, to save complicating the formula I haven't try to include a uh, failsafe mechanism for that. But as you can see, aggregate gave us the same answer as the max if did without an array. So what we want to do is create this table with exactly the same logic. We want to match the name with this athlete here, and we need to lock the column reference. The next if is we need to match the exercise. to lock down the row reference this time and if those two things work if those criteria are met what we want to take the max of is their predicted 1RM and if we close 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 control shift enter what we get is a series of maxes now if there's zeros there, it means that that particular athlete has not lifted that exercise and therefore there is no data in the system for them. So we've got this table now. We could convert it to a table if we wanted to. Um, 
there's no huge need to at the moment, but what we would be able to do is simply copy the data or transcribe the data from this table into a table such as this, which is inside our Strength Program Builder. So the whole purpose of this process is to create uh, an easier way to set up max lifts that automatically update your master programming sheet. Stand by for the final video where we look at a little bit of VBA so that we can get the data into the system easily.